Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Got a question in from viewer Joa O'Hara. I hope I said that right. It's J-O-A-O. -O. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Hi Matt, I know you probably receive hundreds of emails like this one, but if you could help me, it would be I would be really glad. I really like your videos and you are very fair in your APS-C versus Micro Four Thirds assessments, so your opinion would mean a lot to me. I'm on the market for a camera to take some indoor sports photos and eventually some videos. And right now I'm between the D7200 and the Panasonic G7. I've put the price tags on paper and the price difference is considerable. I would like to know if you could give me your opinion on this matter. Thanks. So the D7200 body around 900, he says, I guess that's for your market. 95, uh, Nikon 85 F18G around 450, 50 millimeter F18G around 200 or F14 around 400. And then he's got the Panasonic G7, the body around 600, Olympus 75mm f1.8 around 700, and the Olympus 45mm f1.8 around 300. First of all, I'd like to point out um, your comparison's a little bit off there because the 75 f1.8 is going to give you a field of view on a, on a micro four thirds body of 150. So it's a lot longer lens than the comparable 85 that's a 1.5 crop. So um, a little bit off there. Um, the 45 gives you an 85, which the 85 isn't an 85 on the 72, but um, you don't necessarily have to step into the Olympus 75 millimeter, just so you're aware of that. You probably are. I just wanted to point that out. All of this, of course, ignoring the zooms, Tamron 24 to 70 f2.8 around 1300 versus Olympus 24, uh, 12 to 40 f2.8 around 700. Um, and again, that's not really a apples to apples comparison because you could go with the Sigma 17 to 50, which is a DX lens, 17 to 50 Sigma F2.8. Love that lens. You can pick that up used or even new, I think around 400 used for under three. So there's your better comparison there. That Tamron 24 to 70 is a full frame lens. So um, just want to compare more apples to apples. You can certainly use it, but you're going to get a better range, focal range for your DX body, your D7200, if you go to say the Sigma 17 to 50 F28 OS. Uh, or the Tamron 70 to 200 F28 around 1000 versus the Olympus 40 to 150 F28 around 1002. I also know Panasonic offers some stabilized lenses, but I like the focal lengths of the Olympus more. If you could comment on that too, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much in advance. Best wishes, John. Oh, okay, so he's saying it's John. Okay, so that clears up the name, John. <laughs> Um, yeah, I like the Olympus lenses. Most of the time I prefer Panasonic because I'm shooting with the Panasonic bodies now. And like I've switched to the Panasonic 42.5 F17, which is what I'm shooting this with on my G7. And it's image stabilized. So that's why I really like it. Whereas Olympus offers it in the body. Panasonic, not all their bodies are image stabilized. So this way I've got an image stabilized lens. And I also actually I like the lens a little bit better, even though I really like the 45 F18 from Olympus. So, um, for me, um, apples, apples to apples, Olympus versus Panasonic lenses, they're both good. Um, buy whatever camera body you're shooting with. The reason to go with Panasonic lenses on a Panasonic body is so that, for instance, like I just said, if you need an image stabilized lens, that you're not getting that from Olympus because they don't have to make them image stabilized. Their bodies do that. That's why I switch over to... The Olympus Plus, the new Panasonic 25mm f1.7, beautiful lens, and it's been had for as low as, I think, $59 on sales lately, so you might want to look at that. Okay, so um, D7200 is probably, for what you want to do, my preference for photography. The G7 is my preference for video, as you've probably noticed in my videos. Um, if you want to save a little money, the D7100 is, is a very good body. Some people are going to be quick to point out it doesn't have quite the raw buffer depth as the 7200. That's one big advantage to go to the 72 and pay more money. But I've always been able to shoot around that kind of thing. So if you want to save some money and get essentially the same camera, 7100 is a great deal. I'll put a link to Amazon below for all you folks and for you, John, if you want to check it out. So that's an option to save some money. For photography, I like the... APS-C sensor in the 7100 or the 7200 for ultimate photo quality without going all the way to full frame. Top performing sensor, um, just really nice sensor there uh, and you're not going to be able to beat that with any other APS-C body. Well, short of the new D500, but that's not, that's not even out yet. So 
Um, I would probably go with your D7100 if you want to save some money. D7200 if you want to spend the extra on the body. The um, 50, the 85 f 18 g is a beautiful lens. By all means, you could save some money there by going with the older f 18 d You're not really going to get a lot of advantage with the new G um, other than it's just going to cost you more. There's some maybe a little bit better coatings on it, but the older f 18 d is a stellar lens and it will autofocus on the 7100 or 7200 because that bodies, both those bodies have a motor drive in them. So yeah, you know, you can't do that on a 5500 or a 3300 because they don't have, they only take AFS lenses. You can save some money there and use an AFD lens, an 85 F18 AFD. I'll put a link below too for you for that uh, with a 7100 or 7200. Um, I really like, I love my Nikon 50mm F18G. Wholeheartedly recommend buying one of those. Love it. Um, not sure it's worth stepping up to the F14 on there for you. Probably a slower focusing lens, especially indoors like that. Uh, tends to be anyways, most people think. Um, been my experience in general too. We're gonna have it back in for some more testing and some more shoots lately or, or uh, later in this month, hopefully, or early February. Uh, Panasonic G7. I could do everything you're wanting to do with the G7. Um, great sensor, not quite on par with what's in the 7100 and 7200, but still a stellar sensor, still works really well. Really good noise characteristics, excellent. Um, not quite as many megapixels. Um, that's why I said, ultimately, if I'm, if I'm just buying one camera and my focus is on photography, it would probably be the 7100 or the 7200 in your situation. If it's equally split between video and photo, I would go with the G7 because it's very good photo quality, um, but, but stellar video quality, better than what's in the 7100 and the 7200, almost simply because it has 4K but also because it has full manual control over video. It's got the flip out screen, a whole bunch of things that is better for video on the G7. Um, the 75 F18, great option. I would probably grab the 42 F17, 42.5 millimeter F17 from Panasonic. It's image stabilized and it'll work very well for you in a hockey situation. Uh, and then you know what lenses you wanna use for zooms and things. I really like my 14 to 140. That's a great option there. Um, if you like the 12 to 40, that's great. The 12 to 35 from Panasonic F28 is a stellar lens. I would recommend it if you were going with the G7 simply because it's image stabilized as well. Um, so yeah, if you are gonna go with the Nikon uh, for, a, for a zoom, go with the Sigma 17 to 50 F28. There's no better lens on the market for that, for a APS-C body right now. Sigma 17 to 50 F2.8 OS image stabilized. You pick them up under $400 used. So those are my recommendations. Um, I tend to lean towards the G7 because I do a lot of video. If you're just heavily into photos and you're not really going to do much video, you said you're going to be getting into it more. But if you know photos, are your primary concern, 7100 or 7200 from Nikon. If you think the video is going to become a bigger concern, then definitely go with the G7, the Panasonic G7, best value on the market right now for video and for very good still photography camera. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me there? Do you agree with my assessments? You could see I lean to, I always put my money where my mouth is. I shoot with the G7, love it. I could shoot everything I do just about with the G7. Um, just about everything. I love it. But uh, I also really like the 7200 and the 7100. So, you know, if you're more, if you're less video and more photos, then I definitely would, would look heavily at those. Um, but what do you guys think? Leave your feedback below. Let's help out, John. Thanks for your question, John. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.